Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kishwar. I'm a first year PhD student at the University of British Columbia under the supervision of Dr. Alam. Uh, today, I'll be presenting uh, a brief part of my master's work at UBC with Dr. Alam. Uh, that is the mechanical properties of rubberized recycled aggregate concrete. So this will be the outline of my today's presentation. First, I will give a very brief introduction to the topic as everyone has already talked about RCA and chrome rubber, and then the specific objectives of my study and the experimental results and the study, et cetera. Now, uh, what is rubberized concrete? As you all know, whenever natural aggregates in concrete is replaced partially by rubber particles, we call it rubberized concrete. Usually, uh, fine aggregate is replaced with crumb rubber. Um, so now, what is crumb rubber? It's basically crushed scrape tires with the steel and fibers removed from them. And the question that was, uh, that is like, why should we even use crumb rubber in concrete? Uh, first of all, about 3 million tires or uh, are 3 million tons of tires are disposed in landfills every year worldwide. Uh, whereas this sit in the landfill, this can be effectively used, reused or recycled as aggregates in concrete. And also this tire dumps poses a serious threat of fire hazard and uh, potential ground for breeding insects. Previously, there had been fire breakouts in Ontario and Iowa. And of course, this will help in reducing the demand on natural aggregates, which is a more sustainable option. Now, uh, what is recycled aggregate concrete? Um, whenever natural aggregates are replaced partially by recycled concrete aggregate or RCA, we call it recycled aggregate concrete. And RCA is, as has been pre presented previously, RCA is just basically crushed concrete produced by demolishing old concrete structures. Um, again, the question, uh, why, should we, uh, why should we use RCA in concrete? Uh, about 52% by weight of the total annual solid construction and demolition waste is held by concrete in Canada. I'm talking about just the Canadian statistics. Uh, that's 52%, so that's huge. This uh, amount of waste is just dumped in landfills, whereas we can effectively use this as aggregates in concrete. And so, as I said, it will help reducing the load on landfill and save a lot of valuable space as well. And it will help in the reduction of demand on natural aggregates, both coarse and fine aggregates. Now, uh, the specific objectives of my study. So therefore I focused on seeing the uh, focus on investigating the prospects of using uh, crumb rubber and RC in concrete. Um, so first of all, I used, uh, I used only crumb rubber in my concrete mixture to see the effects of using crumb rubber in concrete and then only using RC in the concrete mixtures. So I had recycled aggregate concrete mixtures and then a combination of both crumb rubber and RCA to see how does this combination of recycled aggregates affect the concrete mixtures. And then the mechanical properties that I studied were the compressive strength and flexural strength of the concrete mixtures. And then thereby from the results, experiment results obtained, what would be the optimum recycled aggregate con content that I would suggest from my study. Now for the experimental part, um, three levels of three replacement levels for both RC and crumb rubber was considered. And in total, I had nine concrete mixtures. RC was replaced, uh, uh, R, sorry, NCA was replaced, which is natural coarse aggregate, was replaced with RCA by weight. So the percentages were 50% and 100%. And sand was replaced with crumb rubber by volume. So that's 10% and 20% replacement levels that I used for crumb rubber. This is the mixed design matrix of my concrete mixtures. The uh, target design strength was 35 MPA. And the, um, sorry, the water amount was adjusted for the mixtures that had RCA in them. And this is just a, a look at the cross section of my concrete mixtures. So the leftmost one is the conventional concrete. The middle one had 50% RCA and 10% rubber in them. And the rightmost one had 100% RCA and 20% rubber in them. And um, 
Can you see my screen yet? Yes, we can see it, yes. Uh, I will just, uh, when I give, when I turn on my video, the presentation gets stuck. So I will just skip it, sorry. Yeah, uh, is it okay now? Is it going on? Yes, yes, go ahead. Thank you, thank you very much, okay. So as you can see, that's a close-up picture at the crumb rubber in my uh, in my concrete specimen, and that's a close-up picture of the RC in my concrete specimen, just to give a uh, idea. And for the experimental test, this was my compression test setup. So I had standard 100 by 100 millimeter by 200 millimeter concrete cylinders, and I had strain gauges attached to the cylinders to get accurate stress strain curves under compression. And this was my flexural test setup. This is a close-up view of the actual beam. So I had a standard 100 by 100 millimeter cross section and 350 millimeter length beams. And I tested three beams for each mixture. Uh, so to get the accurate mid-span deflection of the beams, I had built a yoke and uh, the uh, so that, and the, LVDT was set in the middle mid span of the beam so that I can get um, the deflection values uh, irrespective of the support settlements on both sides. And for the results, <coughs> results, this is a overall look at the compressive strength of my concrete mixtures. As you can see for just to see the effect of rubber, I had a 38% reduction while using 20% rubber in my concrete mixtures. Uh, now, a point I would like to mention to use the crumb rubber in my concrete mixtures, I actually had treated them previously with sodium hydroxide solution. I used a 20% sodium hydroxide solution to treat the crumb rubber particles so that the bonding is better and I can get better compressive strength of the concrete mixtures. And um, so I got up to 38% reduction while using 20% level of crumb rubber in the concrete mixture. And while, and to see, um, for the RC mixtures, interestingly, I saw a 17% uh, increase from the control mixture while using 50% RCA. Um, so this can be attributed to the uh, higher roughness of the RCA surface and also the MCA used in my mix was a bit off limits towards lower particle range. Uh, so the combination of 50% RCA and 50% MCA gave a well-graded mixture which might have resulted the increase in strength or the better strength. And then for 100% RCA, the reduction was only 10%. And while uh, the compressive strength of the rubber as recycled aggregate concrete mixtures, uh, I received up to 43% reduction when using 100% uh, RCA and 20% crumb rubber. Uh, overall, uh, all the mixtures actually satisfied the target strength of 35 MPa, except for the um, RCA 100 and CR20 mix. Um, so at 56 days, all the mixtures actually satisfied the target design strength. Now, these are the compressive stress strain curves. The left one is for the rubberized concrete mixtures and the right one is for the recycled aggregate concrete mixtures. For the rubberized concrete mixtures, the uh, initial slope was similar to the conventional concrete mixtures, uh, when, uh, but uh, as it moved forward, uh, the modulus of elasticity of the uh, rubberized concrete mixtures was actually lower than that of the conventional concrete mixtures. So the slope was slightly uh, less than the conventional concrete mixtures. And uh, if you look at the right side, uh, recycled aggregate concrete mixtures actually had similar slope to the conventional concrete mixtures. And these are the compressive stress strain curves of the re rubberized recycled aggregate concrete mixtures. Uh, so all the uh, RRAC mixtures had lower stiffness than the control con concrete. As you can see, the slope actually lowered with the increase in RC and from rubber level. And uh, so these are just a um, few of my failed specimens. Uh, um, as you can see, the rubberized concrete mixtures, this actually held up pretty good even after failure, whereas the 
whereas the conventional concrete mixture just crushes under uh, the highest load. And with 100% rubber and 20%, sorry, with 100% RC and 20% rubber, the cylinder was actually pretty compact yet after, even after failure, as you can see in the rightmost picture. And so this, are, this is the flexural strength of all the concrete mixtures. Um, again, for the rubberized concrete mixtures, the reduction in flexural strength uh, was 19% for 20% for the mixture that had 20% rubber in it. And the RCA mixtures had similar flexural strength uh, as the con conventional concrete. So it did not affect the flexural strength much using the RCA. And while using both RC and rubber in the mixtures, uh, I received up to 32% reduction in flexural strength for the mix, mix that had 100% RC and 20% rubber in them. Overall, um, uh, again, all the mixtures except the R, uh, except the 100% RC and 20% rubber mixture satisfied the target flexural strength of 3.5 MPa, which I get from the target compressive strength. Now, uh, okay, so these are the load deflection curves of my rubber's concrete mixtures and the recycled aggregate concrete mixtures. Um, this is for the rubber's recycled aggregate concrete mixtures. Interestingly, all of the rubber's recycled aggregate concrete mixtures had lower flexural stiffness than the, um, than the natural concrete mixture. It actually, uh, stiffness went on going down as we increased the replacement levels. These are just a few of the pictures under uh, flexural bending. Now, to summarize, uh, for my study of mechanical properties only, the CR content is uh, up to 10% replacement level by volume can give good strength. And the RCA content up to 50% replacement um, is uh, optimum. And for the combination of, of RCA and CR, 50% and 10% gave me 20% less compressive strength than the control mixture and still satisfied the 35 day uh, structural concrete uh, mixture criteria, design strength criteria, and it had only 19% reduction in flexural strength. And all the RRC mixture had, had improved strain with respect to the uh, highest stress level, the, the material capacity, and improved flexural behavior of RRC with lower flexural stiffness was also found from my study. And these are a few of the references. And thank, I would like to thank you all these organizations and thank you.